For this demo, I added the claims authorization manager to our solution. So we have this class here, authorization manager, which derives from claims authorization manager and we get passed in the authorization context. So what this um, class is doing is basically, again, it, it, it dumps out the fact that it's, it's running currently so we can see when exactly it, it's, it's being invoked in the pipeline. And it basically looks at the actions, uh, dumps them out to the screen, looks at the resources so we can always see what we get. Okay, so what I also did is in the service, I registered the authorization manager in configuration. So here's our claims authorization manager configuration element. And um, combined with the fact that we're using the new identity pipeline, as soon as this thing is registered, it will also get invoked. So when we run the service and run our client, and have a look at our service. You see that first claims transformation happens, which is um, exactly correct. So we take the raw, the raw principle from the authentication process, um, apply our application specific transformation, and then authorization gets invoked. And you can see that um, WCF invokes the authorization manager uh, for every request here. Uh, automatically, so we didn't have to write any code for that. So you see that um, there, there's there's a single action here of a type um, that's a claim type of name um, with a value of get identity, and a, a resource claim again with the claim type of name, and this value here is the endpoint address um, that is uh, in in that claim value here. So where where does get identity come from? This this string. Um, so when we look at our our claims uh, service contract, you see that when I specified the uh, um, interface here, I have an operation contract here and the action is called get identity and that matches uh, with the string here, get identity that you'll see here. So that's how this um, comes from. So um, with that feature, what you can basically do is write um, an authorization manager that looks at all your actions that are registered in your system, uh, looks at um, um, the endpoint um, where this, uh, the client is coming um, uh, to, and then combined with the principle that, that is part of the, um, of the authorization context, you see here the, the, the um, claims principle, you can make a decision if the user is allowed to invoke this operation or not. So this is uh, the example for having more like a coarse-grained type of um, uh, authorization logic. This, is, this gets invoked automatically by WCF. The other thing you can do is um, you can annotate your, your services with uh, this claims pr um, principle permission attribute. So let's do that. So let's go here and Let's do a claims principle permission. Okay, security action dot demand. And you see now that you can pass in um, an operation, for example, read, and the resource could be in our example, for example, claims. So that is basically what this. Uh, this method is doing, right? It, it's reading claims. So we can shorten that here. So what, what this gives you is that you don't have to use the actions that you um, assigned to your methods, but can provide more, maybe maybe more domain specific things like, um, you know, you're, you're not tied to um, CLR method names or whatever is in your Vistal file, but can, you know, provide more domain specific things like reading claims, for example. So now with that annotation in place, um, let's have a look what we'll now see in our in our console output. So let's close down that, run the service again, run our client, okay. 
And now you see that authorization is invoked twice. So first it gets invoked automatically by the pipeline with the get identity uh, action and the uh, endpoint um, um, URL as the resource. And the second time it gets invoked with our read action and our resource claims. So this is not optimal, I think, yeah, um, because sometimes maybe you wanna you wanna um, do pipeline-based authorization. Sometimes you wanna use more this annotation-based approach, but the way um, the way the, um, this is implemented in .NET, um, it's not very helpful because you see that the claim types are the same in both cases. So there's no easy way to distinguish between what is coming from um, the WCF pipeline-based authorization and what is coming from your annotations you put on, uh, on an operation. So I, I don't like that too much. So what I did is um, in the Fintecture Identity Model Library, I, I provided my own implementation of this attribute here. And this is just called claim permission. Besides that, it um, it's the same. So when we run that now, when we run our service here and run the client and go back to our service, you see the slight the slight difference here is this that now the pipeline-based authorization still uses the name claim with the get identity and so on, but the things that come from within our service, they use a different claim type. They use this application slash claim slash authorization slash action and slash resource. So maybe that's that's useful for you. Um, the idea is, as I said, to be able to, um, to distinguish between what is coming from per request authorization and what is coming from annotations you did inside of your um, of your service and then you can you know write some easy code here um, so, so you can act differently based on where this is coming from so I could do something like like this if the, the action has this um, action type that is coming from my claim permission class then it's application authorization otherwise it's WCF pipeline authorization so let's quickly run that again Here's the service, here's the client. So you see now here, the first time it's pipeline authorization and the second time it's application authorization. And the last thing is, so let's say you, uh, you, you need knowledge from within your um, operation to make authorization decisions, you can um, also do that. So let's go to our claim service so let's say, for example, inside here somewhere you have enough information so you know actually what you're going to do authorization on. You can also do something like var result equals claims authorization dot check access. And then you can pass in, um, I'm reading claims. And you can also pass in more information. For example, I'm also reading the uh, identity type and I'm also reading the principal type. So this is another way of doing things here. And when we run that, um, let's run the service. Let's run that client. Okay. You see now that here we are, we are invoking this thing. Uh, it's application authorization. The action is read and there, there are a bunch of resources now like claims, identity type, and principal type. So um, that is my preferred approach. So when I build authorization systems, I basically start implementing a claims authorization manager and use um, either pipeline-based authorization or declarative authorization or imperative authorization, depending on your situation.